New iPhones get announced every year, but there's always someone who scoffs and says Apple is selling last year's iPhone in a new color at a new price. With the iPhone 14, though, unless you're looking at the iPhone 14 Pro, that person is not entirely wrong. In this video, I'm going to cover 6 top reasons why you probably shouldn't go out and buy an iPhone 14. Number 1. The iPhone 13 already has amazing battery life. If you've spent any time with the iPhone 13, you know its battery is no slouch. Apple packed a massive battery considering the phone's size, allowing it to deliver up to 15 hours of video streaming and up to 75 hours of audio playback. On the iPhone 14, Apple managed to squeeze some additional screen time out of the phone, but not by much. In fact, the battery on the iPhone 14 is virtually the same size as on the 13. Apple rates the iPhone 14 for up to 16 hours of video streaming and 80 hours of audio playback. While those are definitely some impressive numbers, they're not a huge step up from the previous model. Number 2. No USB-C port yet. We had our fingers crossed hoping that the iPhone 14 would be the first USB-C iPhone. But, the latest iPhone is still stuck with Lightning, the same port we've had since 2012. You might have heard that the EU wants all new phones to have USB-C. And in 2022, that idea became law in the EU. However, that new legislation won't go into effect until 2024. So, if you were waiting for a USB-C iPhone, you'll need to hold out a little longer. Number 3. Your iPhone already has a great camera. If you own an iPhone that came out in the last couple of years, you already know it has a great camera. Apple did make some improvements to the iPhone 14's new camera module, but remember, the real upgrade the boost to a 48-megapixel sensor only landed on the iPhone 14 Pro. And unlike the Pro models, the iPhone 14 packs a 12-megapixel camera sensor, just like the iPhone 13. For the iPhone 14, Apple did include a larger sensor that can take in more light, which means that the iPhone 14 has better low-light performance, but ask yourself this. How often do you actually shoot in dim lighting? So, even though the iPhone 14's camera got a little better, the iPhone 12 and 13 already have great cameras. Even if you are photography obsessed, stepping up to the iPhone 14 Pro would be a better choice. Number 4. The iPhone 14 didn't get a 120Hz display. Apple's ProMotion technology was one of the most significant additions to the iPhone 13 Pro. Unfortunately, that feature hasn't trickled down to the base iPhone 14, meaning you're still stuck with a standard 60Hz display. The iPhone 14 starts at $799, and although Apple calls it a budget iPhone, it's still a lot of money for most people. Almost all Android phones today at that price point ship with 120Hz high refresh rate displays. Unfortunately, choosing Apple means giving that up, because the iPhone 14 doesn't get the coveted 120Hz display like the Pro models. Number 5. You get the iPhone 13's processor. Although the iPhone 14 Pro packs Apple's latest and greatest, the A16 Bionic, the regular iPhone 14 is powered by the older A15 Bionic chip, the same one in the iPhone 13 series. Although it's no slouch by any means, it does have some limitations. One of the biggest challenges with any mobile chipset is managing heat, and under high load, the A15 Bionic definitely gets hot. If you're playing a demanding game like Genshin Impact, you could see frame rates drop and your screen brightness reduced as your phone tries to keep itself cool. Although Apple uses the 5-core GPU variant of the A15 Bionic in the iPhone 14 and says it has improved thermal design over last year, you're still getting an older processor that doesn't have quite as much power as the A16 Bionic in the iPhone 14 Pro. Number 6. It's a great time to buy an iPhone 13. When Apple releases a new iPhone, its older model typically goes on sale or gets a steep price cut. Now that the iPhone 14 is here, Apple slashed the price of the iPhone 13 by $100, making it just $699. That's a good deal, considering that the iPhone 13 packs almost the same battery life, is powered by the same chipset, and has a comparable camera module. And if you're thinking about going pro, but don't want to shell out a grand, you may want to consider picking up the iPhone 13 Pro instead of the iPhone 14. Although Apple no longer sells the iPhone 13 Pro directly on its website, you can still pick it up from your carrier or an authorized reseller at a discount, meaning you get features like the triple lens camera and a 120Hz ProMotion display without breaking the bank. People wait all year to see just what Apple's going to throw into the next iPhone, 
and although it's always tempting to go for the newest and shiniest iPhone available, picking up last year's model is often a great way to save some money and end up getting more bang for your buck too. iPhone 14 Was it worth the wait? If you're stuck deciding whether to pick up the iPhone 14, it's important to consider how big of an upgrade it'll actually be. If you still have an older iPhone, like the iPhone X, the iPhone 14 could be an excellent choice for you. However, if you already own a newer, 5G-enabled iPhone, the iPhone 14 really isn't worth the cash. Unless you're somebody who needs to have the latest and greatest, for most people, the iPhone 13 will probably give you more bang for your buck right now.